Hey there, Hearthstone friends. Today we are gonna be talking about something interesting today. Blizzard has recently announced that they may roll out further buffs or nerfs as necessary, depending on the meta settling in. We are about two weeks into the expansion and can already see a grasp on how the meta is playing out. What I would like to discuss today is a prediction of buffs that I think would be quite helpful for the classes that are in the lower bracket. Keep in mind that all these stats you will see are compared from HS Replay and is shared with data from Diamond to Legend Rank. There will be some stats you see on the right which will have some information on why I believe these changes are necessary. And lastly, do keep in mind that this is my own opinion. I've used HS Replay statistics to help my judgment to the best of my ability. Without further ado, let's get right into the cards. First up, we have Craftsman's Hammer. Having its effect going from 4 armor per swing to 5 armor per swing. This may seem like a very minor buff, but I do think it's quite necessary when you account for cards that are around this with an effect that are slightly above 1 mana. Of course I am talking about Outrider's Axe, a weapon that draws you a card per swing and the effect that is worth roughly 1 to 1.5 one mana. The reasoning for this minor buff to occur, of course, is because the high inclusion of the Craftsman's Hammer in decks, sitting at about 72.3% inclusion rate. Because of the popularity of the deck, and it not performing as well as it should due to its below average play rate, should be increased in my opinion. Now we could go even as far to say it could develop 6 armor and still be okay, but that may just be me in a control mindset, so I won't do that to you. Lastly, before we move to the next card, I also want to point out that the kept mulligan rate is actually quite high, meaning that 61.6% .6 of players keep this card in their opening hand. Yet on average, Craftsman's Hammer is played at around 6-7 to seven mana. This could possibly be that Craftsman's Hammer isn't a solid weapon to play on 4 if it runs into something like aggro, or there are other options that can help them get out of a dangerous scenario. Next card we have is Bellowing Flames, which I believe is actually a really cool card. And everyone seems to love it as well as the inclusion of Bellowing Flames is 76.1% and the kept rate at an 85.9% during the mulligan phase. That is really high odds, yet for some reason the played win rate of this card is very low for the inclusion. My thinking of why this could be is that it is clearly just too expensive to play the full effect for 5 mana. When I play tested this in some of my warrior decks, occasionally facing hunter and mage, I couldn't see why I was paying 5 mana to deal 10 damage total with bellowing flames, when hunter and mage were paying 5 mana to deal 15 damage total with star power. So clearly the card would have to either increase in damage or lower in cost. To be honest, I could have gone both ways and decided to simply just reduce the card to 2 mana to make it a 4 mana deal 10 damage total to enemy minions. Or increase the damage to where it states 3 mana deal 5 damage to a minion, forge, deal 7 damage to enemy minions randomly. But it just seems like it's just not worthy of the cost. Like are we really going to have a 2 mana deal 5 damage to a minion? We very much could. And don't get me wrong, that was my first idea to go through, but if it became a problem, then this card would just end up being nerfed from 2 mana back to 3 mana. Instead, I decided to go with a different approach and change both the mana cost and the damage total. The forge effect is the same, and instead, I have made the card a 1 mana deal 3 damage to a minion. A much worthy effect, you can easily play this for 1 mana cl to clear out one single target, 3 damage is still the sweet spot for most minions, and instead of paying 5 mana to deal 10 damage total to enemy minions, you'll be playing 3 mana to deal 8 damage total to enemy minions, which actually seems really good. And I think this would make the card super playable and justify the popularity of this card without it being a problem. Then again, it's tough to say we've never really seen forge cards being buffed or nerfed yet, so let me know in the comments what you guys think. Moving away from War Raider, we have a Priest spell, Grace of the High Father, going from 3 mana to 2 mana. There's a bit of reasoning why I left this at Restore 8 health and not reduce the health restored. 
One of the main things is that Priest has always done and excelled best healing compared to any other class. A 2 mana restore 8 is not the end of the world. And if anything, Priest could get away with it. The second reasoning why I simply reduce the cost is the overheal mechanic has actually been underperforming than what was intended. None of the overheal cards have seen much play besides some weird wild shenanigans. They've been tested, sure, but it's never been a part of an inclusion of multiple decks. We can go on and discuss overheal countless amount of times, but I'll save that for another video. I think this card is very similar to Renew, where it restores health and discovers you a card. Renew was possibly the best restore slash discover that Priest has ever obtained, and I think it's fair to say that this card, be it 2 mana, restore 2 to 5 health, and discover something at 3 to 6 mana, is totally valid. Even at this mana cost, I don't think it's as good as Renew, simply because it discovers minions and spells, including neutrals, which are generally lesser value compared to class cards. Moving from Priest, we're going over to Demon Hunter. Once again, Forge cards are very weird as they have two effects in one, so it's very hard to actually balance compared to a standard card. Making this down to straight up two mana to draw two made no sense. While making it four mana draw three potentially makes it more expensive and just unplayable. What I found to be the problem with this card through playtesting is that you actually just draw too much and have very little mana to empty your hand. Clearly you don't want to play the 3 mana draw 2 cards as that's just not a strong effect anymore. This could also be a discussion for another thing, but to shorten, when classes have a 3 mana draw 2, it usually underperforms. Demon Hunter already has one, drawing 2 rush minions with some unique effect of reducing their cost. Rogue has had some in the past where you draw 2 minions, and if you play them, give them stealth. They're not necessarily a bad effect but they do fall short. But with this card specifically, the Forge effect is really strong. If you play your deck correctly, you can draw three to four cards easily with the Forge effect alone, and in addition, draw the additional cards with the initial effect. What I have done is basically reduced the cost of the card to two mana, and adjusted the effect to draw one card instead. And once again, it's very tough to say if this is a buff or an unnecessary change, but I do know that you are going to be playing this card for its Forge effect and not for the 3 mana draw 2. And if you ask me, I personally think you can make this 1 mana draw 1 with the Forge effect still being the same. But after some thought, that could easily make it into one of the strongest Forge cards or even draw cards we've seen. And is again another tough call. Again, let me know what you guys think about this change. Another Demon Hunter card, except this one is a bit more unique. Eridar Deceptor has been changed from a 4 mana 3 5 to a 3 mana 2 5. I'd like to compare this card to a Hunter card, Kolkar Pack Runner. It's the 2 mana 2 3 when you cast a spell, summon a 1 1 beast with rush, that has a similar effect with a different activation. The Demon Hunter card here, you need to just draw a card, whereas the Hunter card, you needed to play spells. In my opinion, drawing cards is harder to do than playing spells even if it's in Demon Hunter who excels in drawing cards. The problem I found with this card is that it's really not worth the effect at 4 mana. To be honest, even at 3 mana this may not even see play, but a 2-5 is a very survivable minion. The reason I think setting it at 3 mana cost may not be enough is because Kolkar Pack Runner was once nerfed to 3 mana and basically lost its play after its nerf. Another consideration instead for the Demon Hunter card is to maybe just make it the normal 4 mana 3 5 stats and make it summon 2 1 1s with rush. It's very tough to say, and in my opinion, as much as I would like to see this card, even if by chance Blizzard did buff this, won't see play in my opinion. And lastly, I have a hidden pick, somewhat of a personal favorite of mine. I'm not sure if any of you have played Elemental Mage, and clearly it is not a winnable deck sitting at a 43.5% deck win rate. But if Blizzard adds more elementals to support Elemental Mage, I strongly believe that this would be one of the few times that it could be a valid deck. Before I discuss Aqua Archivist's change going from a 2 mana 2-2 two two to a 2 mana 2-3, two I would like to briefly explain why this buff would even occur. Unchained Gladiator, a new elemental card introduced in the latest expansion, 
is a 4 mana 4-4 four, four, draw a card, repeat for each elemental you played last turn. I've played this deck for quite some time and have found Unchained Gladiator to provide an insane amount of draw. I'm talking at least 2-4 to four cards on average. The clear staple of the elemental deck is Unchained Gladiator, and I believe no changes to this card specifically needs to happen. But what does need to happen is cards around Unchained Gladiator needs to be buffed in order for their entire deck to flourish. The reason why I changed the health to 3 for Aqua Archivist is simply because the elemental deck needs to start off strong in order for the deck to even become relevant. We may not see Elemental Mage arrive in this expansion, but if the Hearthstone team makes more Elemental support cards in the mini set or the next expansion, I can imagine this deck being considered and actually give Mage two different types of decks to play, Elemental Mage being the cheaper option. But that's all for the buff predictions. What do you all think should be buffed? Let me know in the comments below and if you like this video feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more in-depth Hearthstone content. As always, thanks for watching.